This is the Mold King Heavy Industrial Forklift set number 13106 with just over 1700 parts. It's an RC controlled Technic compatible forklift. I paid $124 shipped, but is this model any good? Stick around and I'll cover in detail the mechanical features, the build process, and explain what's so good about knockoff Legos anyway. The box is really nice with an embossed photo of the model. It's also the shipping box and got absolutely destroyed in transit. So if you do buy from AliExpress, don't expect the box to be in a presentable condition. All the parts are really nice and bagged. This model includes four motors and a battery pack, and the kit features some specialty parts like carbon fiber rods, clutch gears, detailed wheel hubs, and even some linear actuators. The wheels are also very nice with grippy tires. The internal packaging lacks any dividing members to keep the parts from shifting during transit. So I got a pretty bent manual, but waiting a couple days with a weight on top fixed this for the most part. The manual is really nice, colorful semi-gloss, sections are organized by numbered part bags, and this is implied how you build it and works for the most part. The fit tolerance for all the parts is somewhere between firm and tight, so slightly tighter than most LEGO Technic stuff. The parts are all consistent, clean, straight, and uniform in their tolerances. Again, these are not LEGO Technic system bricks. There's no branding, and aside from this having a slightly tighter fit, you wouldn't be able to really notice they're not Technic parts. This set features some commendable building practices that align with the complexity and elegance of a forklift, a sentence that is new to me as well. Here are some notable mechanical design features. There are locking pins for most motor axle shafts so they stay in place and they can't be driven out from axial loads. Clutch gears for all mechanisms that have physical limit stops, like the fork tilt and steering. This is a good feature to protect the motors and the respectable drivetrains from being overdriven. The chassis is very dense with motorized steering, a differential drivetrain, fork, lift, and tilt mechanisms. So this is an expert build, and due to the density of all these mechanisms, some steps require adult strength. There are some long axles that require being pushed through multiple parts all at once. At times, this is a significant feat of finger strength. And if you make a mistake with this assembly and have to remove said axle, this can be a daunting task. So what is it like to build? In my kit, some bags are missing parts between sections, and this is only one or two parts. So you might have extras in bag 3-2 that you needed in bag 3-1, and you won't know this until you just keep pushing forward. It's not critical, but you get a weird off feeling while you're building, but in the end, you will have some spare parts. Not very many though, they're just like the interlocking pins. So if you do crack or break a model, you're stuck with it. I didn't break anything, so I didn't have to reach out to customer support, so I can't comment on what that's like if you need a spare part. So the overall build, without counting mistakes, this took me just under 13 hours. The manual is very good, but it's not perfect. There's about a dozen CAD errors throughout the instructions, and some areas could use a little bit better clarity or detail. This is nothing egregious in the manual that's going to contribute to building errors, but I'm human. I made a few mistakes, so in my 14-hour building experience, I had about two hours worth of fixing errors. So first, the good things. Scales and part length callouts are on every page where needed, and new parts are outlined in red. The manual is easy to read, and it's nearly 300 steps. The build pace is relatively consistent, although the start of it gets difficult, the later ends are pretty easy since telegraphing what is next is obvious by the, the functions of the forklift itself. And the entire 12 to 14 hour build is paced out in the bag subsets, which usually take 90 minutes to three hours, depending on the section and the amount of parts. Now on to some small critiques. 
like parts that come in either gray or white or gray and black. And black and gray on small parts is hard to tell uh, between the two at times. Some graphics are clipped due to some layout problems. The battery pack changes versions between two pages of my manual. It does not match what is supplied, um, but there's no issue with the fit. Some parts disappear. You can see this middle peg should be shown in the middle. There's no use of changing overlapping parts to semi-transparent when you're looking at the main model. So view angles like this are sort of obscure. A detailed view at a different angle or perspective would really help the visual clarity of some steps like this. So here's where I made some mistakes. There's no callouts for critical functions of gearing. So my first major mistake was this tilt mechanism. Can you see it? So I mirrored the gears because I have a human brain that thought that would be nice, but that does this. Oh crap. Instead of this. This was one of those long axles that's hard to put in and even harder to pull out. This required pliers. It's it's definitely my mistake, but it but a step like this that's so hard to fix by the time you realize it, it would be nice to call attention to it in a future manual revision. There are some more CAD errors. So to mount the battery pack, it says use a seven stud spacing, but in reality, it's only five. On this page, these two scales are mixed up. This step uses the 11 long stud part, and then this step uses the five and nine. So the scales should be switched like this. In summary, it's mostly small CAD errors or clerical mistakes, and they're easily fixable. Densely populated and obscure assemblies commonly have alternate angles shown in Lego builds, like this example here from a 2011 Lego set. Easily fixable in the next print batch. I would like to see some alternate perspectives in some dense areas where placement is obscured, and although the mistakes were mine, a call out for identifying gear rotation on matching motor drives would be nice. The manual gets the job done with some room for improvement. The build payoff is honestly a big surprise. It's a fully articulated forklift and it's fun. This model weighs in at over 3.3 pounds and its max lifting capabilities are about one third of its total weight. It's a commendable figure for system bricks. What's really impressive is the lift height and tilt reach. The forks can reach 10 and a half inches and have a full tilt span of about 38 degrees. The remote control out of the box will control everything, but it has some quirks. Movement speed is a bit fast for the forklift for what you'd expect for forklifts. The remote is digital, so with a top speed gear too high, it's also all go or no go, which lacks precision. Eventually, I did get the app to work by trying a different QR code found on the box and not in the manual. For the app, you have to enable nearby Bluetooth and general location tracking, and I don't know why the latter is needed, otherwise the app will not connect to the battery box. I would say the app is required to get the full enjoyment out of the RC components, and that's for precision and some settings adjustment. The included remote has forward and reversed swapped, and I do have the differential drive installed correctly. To swap that, I'd have to take this apart, and that's out of the question. So with the remote, again, a direction is flipped, and the speed is too fast, and with digital controls, it's either on or off, and that makes things cumbersome. Using the phone app enables much more precise controls. So within the app, there's rotation inversion for every motor channel, and there's also high, medium, and low speed settings and analog controls via a touch input. Using the app expands controls to very precise and slow movements, and it's what you'd expect if you've ever operated a forklift.
So after forking for a few hours, I only have two minor complaints that could improve the mechanical components of this build. This is the lift shaft for the forks and it did slip out from axial loading forces. I mentioned there's pegs to keep shafts in place on other parts of the build, but it's not here for whatever reason. Lastly, the steering has a bit of backlash, but this is inherent to brick systems anyway. Aligning the forks or hitting bumps is tricky when the slop of the steering can result in some unprompted turns. Overall, honestly, this is really an impressive set for the price. The fit and function of the parts are excellent. The build complexity and playability is entertaining and nuanced. I was expecting some compromises at this price, but it's all minor things that can be fixed, mainly in printed documentation. I highly recommend it if you're into Legos or forklifts. Got it. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go.